um, we'll wait a little minute so that uh, everyone has time to arrive uh, before starting. And we are going to, to, to be able to begin after. Okay, um, let's start now. So, hello everyone again. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you today for this new um, Kailabs webinar dedicated to the space division multiplexing. Today, uh, then, we are interested in what SDM uh, is all about, uh, technologies capable of doing uh, it in fiber as well as in free space. Uh, we'll present some mode multiplexers available on the market and try to compare them to our SDM product in Kailabs. Uh, finally, um, we will present a few use cases, uh, including the KDDI record uh, that allowed us to reach uh, the incredible uh, 10 petabits per second speed inside a standard multimode optical fiber. And if you have any question during this presentation, uh, dedicated space to that is available on the bottom right side. Uh, do not worry if your question does not appear. And if I do not stop uh, the presentation for answering uh, it, I will display and answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, but as always, uh, let's start by explaining uh, who we are and what we propose at Kylabs. Uh, firstly, let me introduce myself uh, to, my name is Tanguy Lwinik, and I'm a project and product manager at Kylabs, and I'm in charge of the Proterus product and custom applications too. Uh, what is Kylabs? Uh, we are a deep tech company. Kylabs developed a few years ago a unique patented technology, which is the MPLC. Uh, MPLC has a multi-plane light conversion. And more generally, we are experts in beam shaping. We are now uh, more than 50 with uh, 20 PhDs, and we are in capacity to develop, manufacture, and sell innovative optical components. Uh, what the location, the location we are located at Rennes in Brittany, in the west part of France. And since last spring, too, we have uh, also an office in Paris. Uh, our expertise is beam shaping. What we call exactly with beam shaping, it's possible to play especially for telecom application on several properties of, of the light uh, inside an optical fiber or free space like the power, the wavelengths, polarization and phase. And at Kylabs, uh, with the help of our uh, MPLC uh, that I will describe after, we allow the addition of a new degree of freedom thanks to beam sh shaping, which is the shape of the light. And this has a lot of area of application and we developed a range of products uh, around our uh, expertise and the MPLC technology. Uh, let me present them. Uh, first, uh, we have the Canunda range, uh, which is specialized into the improvement of uh, industrial cutting lasers. Uh, we have after the Aruna product. Aruna proposes to improve uh, existing legacy network. Uh, Tilba, uh, Tilba is dedicated to free space satellite uh, laser communications. On the right side, you have Custom. Custom, in fact, is not a product. Uh, it's relative to the specific development for applications in defense, uh, aeronautics, automotive or biomedical. And today, I'm going to talk about space division multiplexing and our product for that, which is Proteus. I let you discover the topics of the day that we are going to discuss. Firstly, uh, we are going to, to spend uh, some time uh, on what is a space division multiplexing. How can we evaluate the, the performance of a mod multiplexer? Uh, what space multiplexer are currently available on the market? 
and we will finish with a presentation of Skylab's Proteus product for space division multiplexing and description of two use cases. Um, the last decades, new techniques um, have been developed uh, in order to meet the, um, the ever-increasing demand for more bandwidth in fiber optics network. Uh, the channel limit or uh, the capacity of uh, channel uh, is a theoretical uh, maximum information transfer rate on that channel for a certain noise uh, level. Uh, today, the channel limits have been reached uh, for the single mode fiber. And we have to investigate you know, the solution to push back this barrier of limitless bandwidth. Um, today, we are going to talk about uh, multiplexing. Even if when you clicked on the link to subscribe to this uh, webinar, uh, you probably have some notions on the subject. But I just want to explain the principle of multiplexing for the others. Uh, multiplexing consists of sending multiple information stream over a single transmission medium. Uh, in, me in telecommunication, the medium used uh, for optical multiplexing, optical multiplexing is, of course, uh, optical fiber. A well-known and widely used multiplexing technique is uh, wavelength division multiplexing, which consists of creating information channels using separate color of uh, layer light, uh, which are the wavelengths. Each wavelength uh, represents a parallel and separate information channel. However, uh, all the solutions are needed to, to increase the number of information, information channels and to meet increasing bandwidth requirements. Uh, it's difficult to further increase the number of WDM channels uh, because, as we said, the channel, channel limit is almost uh, rich in single mode fiber. And multiplying the number of, fi of fibers in a cable is not viable from uh, an operational, operational point of view, especially for maintenance. Uh, and Space division multiplexing, SDM, is one solution for that. A technique uh, to allow to push back this barrier of limitless bandwidth. It consists of using the special mode of light, uh, which acts as independent information bearing channels uh, while remaining compatible with all other multiplexing or data modulation technology. Uh, what do you need for space division multiplexing? Uh, you need first uh, MUX to encode the information and a DMUX to decode it. And between them, free space or few mode fiber or multi mode fiber to allow this multi channel transmission. Uh, what type of shapes are used for SDM? We use what we call uh, modes. Uh, what are they? Uh, modes are a family of uh, monochromatic solution of the propagation equation. When a waveguide uh, here, the optical fiber or free space is traversed uh, by an electromagnetic wave. Here, the light. Its behavior is uh, described uh, by the equation of light propagation in this guide. And the solutions of this equation are called as a mode of the optical fiber, depending on the type of fiber. There are different uh, kind of families of modes. On the right side, you can see, for example, some LP modes as a linearly polarized mode that, could, that you can find in a step index multi-mode fiber. Um, the set of modes of a family contributes a base, constitutes a base whose mathemat mathematical uh, properties give them an orthogonality property. Uh, you can commonly be defined as the mode as a light path uh, in the fiber. Uh, how can we evaluate the performance of a mod multiplexer? Uh, the first one is, of course, the number of inputs. So the number of modes which corresponds to the number of potential channels. The modal selectivity or correct crosstalk is uh, an important criteria too. Uh, the crosstalk characterizes the independence of one channel from another one. Uh, the optical insertion losses also, which gives the total transmission of the component. And finally, a uh, criterion that is a little more difficult to evaluate because it cannot be quantified, but it's the capacity uh, for integration and industrialization. 
uh, what space division multiplexer are currently available on the market. They are mod multiplexer for fiber communication and for telecom application. And we can find also mod multiplexer for free space communication. Let's start with the optical, optical fiber one. Um, about the optical fiber families, we find several types of fiber. First, we can divide them into families as a single core one and the multi core one as MCF. Each of them can after integrate three kinds of fibers, the single mode, uh, which as its name suggests, propagates only one mode, the few mode fiber, FMF, which transmits some modes and has a slightly uh, larger core diameter, and multi-mode fibers, uh, which have a much higher modal composition. The first family of mod multiplexer uses a multi-core fiber with several standard SMF telecom fiber. Um, SMF uh, with, uh, for MCF. Um, a special mod multiplexer for multi-core fibers transmits the information from each single mod input to one of the core of the MCS fiber. Um, the manipulated modes are therefore only the fundamental mode of each fiber. Uh, the more cores in the fiber, the more channels are available. However, it's necessary to maintain a sufficiently large distance between the cores to avoid uh, interference phenomenon in each channel. Uh, this type of multiplexer has proved uh, and has made it possible to establish relatively um, high data rates uh, with this SDM technique. For example, um, transmission capabilities uh, of the order of uh, 2.5 petabits per second can be achieved uh, with this technique. Uh, it has uh, the advantage of using uh, only single mode cores and therefore having optimum propagation speeds, uh, no modal dispersion in a single guide. However, um, this type of solution remains uh, difficult to manufacture today. Indeed, the well digging step uh, between the SMF and MCF and the manufacturing of this fan in out are mature, but quite complex. And in addition, it's necessary to amplify the signals and therefore to, to dope uh, each core of the optical fiber in order to, to provide uh, usable information and the, the end uh, of the of the chain at the end of the chain. Uh, let's now focus on mode multiplexer using a single core uh, multi mode fiber or single core few mode fibers. Um, in this type of configuration, uh, as we said before, the mode is an information channel. The number of channels therefore depends on the fiber and the ability of the multiplexer to generate and couple this mode into the fiber. There are X single mode input channels, uh, a MUX a distance uh, in FMF or MMF fiber or free space, and the DMUX at the end to retrieve the um, information and send it back on uh, SMS fiber. Uh, as we said also previously, the mods being the solution of the propagation equation in the fiber. The Eigen mode of the fibers therefore depend on the architecture. Uh, step index uh, fibers have a uniform uh, refractive index and an abrupt uh, change at the, at the core clamping uh, boundary. The Eigen mode of step index fiber are LP modes as uh, linearly polarized modes. A graded index fiber have a gradually variation of the refractive index of the core, which allows them to have a better modal dispersion. Eigen mode of uh, G, uh, I uh, fibers are LG modes as Lager Gaussian modes or HG modes as Hermit Gaussian modes. And these two families have some rela relation between uh, some relation conversion between them. Usually. Um, not all modes of a fiber are exploitable. Indeed, some modes uh, of the same order mix within a fiber, and we call that the mod mixing phenomenon. You can see um, in front of you an example with a 4LP mod step index fiber reference. 
uh, about the number of solutions of the propagation equation uh, for this kind of step index optical fiber. Uh, there are six propag propagating uh, modes. However, um, two pairs of them have identical uh, propagation constant. They are called um, de degenerate modes because the structure uh, induces that they mix with other uh, modes during the propagation all along the fiber. Uh, in this picture too, you are, for example, in red uh, and in gray, two modes which have no degenerate, degenerate uh, modes, and in yellow and in blue, uh, they have ones. So how to, to manage uh, the mixing mode phenomenon? Uh, the basic one is to what we call mode group division multiplexing. It's uh, to only use four channels instead of six. In our previous example, this is only compatible with direct uh, detection. However, after the, the demo step, you have to analyze the six SMF output of the system to recover uh, the entire system, uh, the entire signal. The second one is to use uh, digital pro processing techniques to exploit uh, degenerate modes with a massive in multiple inputs, multiple output, what we call a MIMO. MIMO using uh, is possible when you realize a mod division multiplexing with current detection. The complexity of this uh, MIMO system depends, in fact, on the number of degenerate, degenerated channel to be managed. Now, um, in the next slides, I would like to present you several uh, space division multiplexer. The idea is to try to be as objective as possible to present our solution. The first technique uh, is probably the, the simplest one. Indeed, there are a lot of components which can generate only one specific mode in free space. And these category groups together present a set of technology allowing the unitary conversion from the fundamental mode to a given mode using a phase mask by a special matching. Some examples are the SLM as special light uh, modulator, the spiral phase space or PPP or binary phase plates, uh, the metamaterials which generate a given mode. Uh, some configuration even offer very good performances if you stay in free space configuration. However, um, this type of architecture is very complicated to align and seems uh, complicated to industrialize uh, this type uh, of configuration. Moreover, in the context of uh, fiber SDM, it's necessary to, to couple each mode uh, using a MIRO and beam splitters, which generates significant uh, losses both during uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing step two. We can note uh, the arrival of new couplers uh, integrated on silicon photonic circuits, which allow a significant reduction in the total volume, but which does not solve the, the issue of the ins high insertion losses. The second technique is probably the, the best known. It's the photonic lantern. The photonic lantern merges several single mode uh, core into a single multi-mode core using a conical waveguide, allowing the lower mode of a multi-mode or a few mode fiber to be excited. And different waveguide techniques exist on the market. For example, photonic lantern can be made uh, from multi-core fibers, from a single mode fiber bundle, or by etching uh, in a glass block. They have delivered promising performances. However, the, the main issue of the photonics lantern are the modal se selectivity. Uh, most of them have zero or partial se selectivity. It means that it's really complicated to manage one mode without exit exiting orders. Um, we can specify also that a selective component have been developed uh, in recent years in the laboratories, um, which allows the mod to be excited separately, but it's still too complex to be manufactured because they are huge and too fragile uh, to be industrialized. Um, another technique is the uh, fiber uh, couplers, the fiber couplers exploits 
uh, nascent wave to achieve uh, index matching between two modes in a SMF and FMF. As you can see in the picture on the bottom right, the fundamental mode of the SMF is converted into the mode which uh, with the same effective index in the FMF. In this example, from the LP01 mode of the SMF, we generate a LP11A mode. You can restart the operation in order to generate uh, other modes with a new kind of SMF, which generates during the tapper path step on other uh, kind of mode. At the end, um, using a cascade architecture based on multiple SMF and a single SMF, it's then possible to, to build a mode multiplexer. And this type of technology gives good performances with a few mode configuration. Uh, there are some industrialized components which propose to merge around uh, three channels. Uh, however, it's not so easy to manufacture and this limited number of multiplexed modes is a real disadvantage of these fiber couplers. Okay. Our solution at Kylabs for SDM is based on the MPLC as multiplane light conversion, a technology patented by Kylabs in 2010. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain you how it works. MPLC is derived technology and a passive optical process whose principle is derived from quantum optics. Uh, with a succession of phase place and free space propagation, we have the ability to transform any kind of Gaussian beams in whatever we want as soon as it's a unitary transformation. Um, unitary basis into another unitary basis. If you want more complex shape and multiple beams, mathematically they always have a solution to modify this shape with more phase plates and free space propagation. If you have to do that in transmission, you have a lot of insertion losses. That's why we decided to have the device in reflection. So we realize a unique texture surface, a unique phase place, and free space propagation is done with the help of only one micro. We can have much more inputs. We can combine them or divide them into only one or separate channel. So we have several optical fiber at the input. We modify each input with the face plates and the free space propagation until the output of the component. We can also modify the fiber elements to free space optic. And you can have a lot of different configurations which correspond to different applications. This component uh, all of us to propose optimal space division multiplexer for free space and fiber telecom applications. So the MPLC today is uh, the state of the art in space division multiplexing. MPLC proposes a record number of space division mode uh, up to 45 in the standard um, uh, OM2 uh, multimode fiber with unparalleled optical performances in terms of cross cold and also insertion losses. Uh, moreover, uh, the component is highly flexible for all applications uh, in free space and in any type of optical fiber. Finally, uh, the fact that it's a technology which is polarization insensitive is really interesting too if your application needs to play with this criteria. Uh, in this table, we compare the described technology with uh, the four criteria, criteria that we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, the number of modes, uh, the crosstalk, the insertion losses, and the integrability and indestructibility of the components. As you can see, MPLC appears today as a reference in the field. And but if you want to spend more time to analyze this table, I recommend you to read our last blog article in our K-Labs website. You will find an infographic table uh, which uh, get back what we said in the previous slides about these technologies and with some reference article and sources for each technology. In the next slides, we are going to, to present Proteus, our industrialized component for space division multiplexing. But um, before that, the webinar of the day mentioned uh, Free Space 2, and I would like to spend uh, some slide and some time on it. Indeed, for, for laser communication, the waveguide is not the optical fiber, it's, of course, it's free space propagation. 
Space division multiplexing can be done also in free space configurations. Most of the MPA advantage are the possibility uh, uh, when you use the MPLC in free space configuration to use any modal base, uh, LP, LG, AG, or use OAM mode, for example. And in free space, there is no mixing mode phenomenon. So you don't need MIMO to exploit all your inputs. And finally, you can play also with the polarization to further increase the bandwidth by playing on this parameter. If you are interested to, to learn more information about it, and especially if you want to know more about the unitary modal uh, conversion system in free space, I invite you to watch the replay of our webinar on the OAM uh, beam generation, OAM as orbital angular momentum. OAM modes are a family of specific modes, but it's largely valid for, for another type of mode. In this webinar, we try to explain and we try to, to compare all this kind of system. We generate this mode exactly as we did here uh, with the uh, uh, SEM for fiber uh, optics. Uh, now, let me present our Proteus product line. So what is Proteus? Proteus is an industrial product incorporating Kylab's MPLC technology. Uh, currently used for various uh, applications, its aim is to help a uh, telecom R&D team to invent uh, the optical network of tomorrow. So there are three package types for different applications and product complexity. Uh, the first one, the Proteus S, it's the simplest configuration, proposes uh, an initiation to the, uh, to the SDM technology with several reference of fibers, standard telecom ON1 to, to M5, uh, stamp index and graded uh, index references uh, two. Uh, the others, the custom products, are called uh, Proteus C, CRS custom. The fiber uh, configuration proposed uh, to max more modes or a specific number of modes in all different kinds of fiber on different kinds of wavelengths. Uh, for that, we analyze your requirement. We try to help you in order to, to give you the Proteus which corresponds to your, to your fiber request. Uh, finally, we have uh, the free space version of the Proteus. As it's in free space, we can play with all the setting as a type of mode or with polarization. Um, and we can, for example, integrate a polarization uh, maintaining SMS fiber at the input of our component. Um, Proteus C integrates our MPLC in a mega, bigger mechanical uh, boxes. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide, but I want to show you that we have a portfolio with existing references uh, for fiber component, but also for free space um, configuration. Uh, the main thing to know is that for any standard, low, or high custom application, we are able to, to adapt to your requests. If you are interested, do not hesitate uh, to contact us again after this webinar for, for these more technical and sales elements. Uh, the type of mode, the number of inputs, uh, or the insertion losses, or the crosstalk uh, performances change just a little bit with your specification, but this table can give you an idea about what kind of fiber uh, we already managed. If you want to avoid, avoid something completely custom or close to something uh, known uh, internally. Um, to finish, uh, let me present now a SDM use case. This use case is the world record of high speed uh, fiber capacity in a standard multimodal optical uh, fiber. It has been realized by the KDDI lab using our Proteus uh, solution. They are not uh, only SDM for achieving it. Uh, the 10 uh, petabit speed have been uh, done by combining all the telecom innovation. First, they use a multi-core fiber, which contains uh, 19 few mode fiber, 19 Proteus maxes after six mods inside each course uh, with the WDM technique, 739 wavelengths per special mode have been multiplexed to. And finally, we use a QAM modulation technique 
which uh, use uh, amplitude and phase to create up to 64 channels for uh, each wavelength. Is. A second use case that I would like to describe you is the Bell, uh, Nokia Bell Labs 1. Uh, the aim of this Bell Lab study was to maximize uh, the bandwidth within a NOM2 type MMF fiber over a distance of 2.2 kilometers using the space division multiplexing, of course, but also uh, WDM, wavelength division multiplexing techniques. When two fibers correspond to older generation multimode optical fiber, they are generally uh, limited to rates around 1 uh, gigabits per second over distances of uh, 500 meters, and they equip a large part of the current uh, telecommunication, telecommunication networks. And for this application, Bell Labs teams realized uh, mode group multiplexing. As you can see in this use case, uh, we manage a group of modes to realize a bidirectional transmission. Uh, the association with um, of the WDM technique and this mode group multiplexing allow to achieve a 14.5 terabit per second bidirectional transmission. And to conclude this uh, short webinar, I'm going to, to try to summarize uh, it in three, ten three sentences. Uh, space division multiplexing allows a significant uh, increase of bandwidth in the fibers and can also be used in free space. Several technologies uh, exist for SDM on the market, but MPLC appears to be the, the most successful. And Kylabs, with uh, its industrial uh, product Proteus, a standard uh, component uh, which integra integrates MPLC uh, that can be customized uh, to meet uh, your, your, your expectation. So thank you all for your attention. Now it's time for, for questions. I'm going to, to, to check the list of questions, uh, but I don't think that you ask me. Okay. So what's the longest distance over which modes were successfully maxed and demax in free space with minimal uh, crosstalk? And the, what's the number number of modes available for multiplexing with the Proteus uh, box? Um, to be honest, I do not have the exact distance for your first uh, question, but I can get back to you for that because I think it's more relative to our uh, TILBAP products, uh, which um, for laser communication. Um, about the minimal prostalk today, uh, we have uh, performances in back-to-back -back, um, uh, uh, configuration. We have really, really, really good level of performances. I can give you some figure, but yes, we are able for to, 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 to max um, in the case of 10 mods uh, multiplexing, a uh, crosstalk around um, yes, minus 25 dB in back-to-back -back configuration. Uh, about the max number of mods available, uh, we already max up to 45 mods inside inside the multi-mod fiber, but it's not a limit. In fact, we, we, we can max more mods if you need, especially for free space propagation where, we, where you have not uh, limit. In fact, we are not limited, in fact, by the the, the model distribution uh, uh, of, of your fibers. But I, I can get, get back to you about this uh, longest distance. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't, don't, don't have uh, this dis distance in mind. I don't want to, to give you wrong uh, information. OK. I have another question. What is the typical power handling for Proteus using ultra fast pulses? Um, today, for standard uh, Proteus, we are uh, able to manage power uh, up to 5 watts in total. However, uh, today, uh, as you can see in the range of products that we have, we have also so, so 
some product for, for, for higher uh, power. So we can customize uh, our uh, Proteus to manage Yes, higher, higher power if you if you need to. Um, for uh, ultra fast pulses, for example, so we can manage uh, some power up to uh, 16 uh, kilowatts uh, 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 in total. But it's not, you know, a standard product. And uh, yes, we have to 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 if you want, uh, for example, uh, uh, a high power. Um, uh, a Proteus with high power is not a standard one, and you need some customization for that. I think that we have another question too. Okay, I think that we have finished with the question. I can just wait a little bit if we have others. No. Okay, uh, thanks you all uh, for your attention. Uh, if but if you have other questions, feel free to 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 come back to me. I will um, answer to them by email, and uh, I will get back to you also uh, for this uh, question of distance, uh, Thomas, uh, by email. Thanks thanks for all, uh, and um, yes, thank you. Bye.